Hey everyone, it's Mike from Overground, and today we're going to be going over the uh, other deck profile that we mentioned in our uh, Learn to Play With Me series, and that's going to be the Shine Greymon deck. So again, I've got a nice little background to showcase today's contenders. We got TK, we got Kari, we got Patamon, we got Hope. Hope is yellow, and guess what color this deck is? Yellow. So... Let's go ahead and get right into it. So, first we're going to talk about the babies. Also, quick disclaimer, and I say this with every deck that we show right now, most of the time, don't take any of the ratios that we have as gospel right now. We're just kind of learning how to play. We're just kind of building based on, A, our knowledge of, of card games in the first place and how we're applying that knowledge to this new card game, and uh, also just kind of building decks as a baseline so that we get a general idea of how to play the game, A, in general, and, and B, this archetype specifically in general. And then as we learn to play and get to get more comfortable with strategies, we'll be able to modify them and make them a bit more competitive or add more text depending on what other decks kind of we see in the format or what other decks A, we'll get our hands on, and B, what we're able to build. I'm using A and B a lot today, I don't know why. But either way, I promise we're gonna get into it, we're gonna get into it. So we're gonna start with the babies. We've got three. Kyubimon. This is the inheritable uh, when it attacks of security's five or more, you get to draw one. And then we have the Nyaramon, which is uh, when it's rested all security, Digimon get plus a thousand. Objectively speaking, in terms of testing, I found Nyaramon as inheritable came out way more often than Kyubimon's did. Uh, I find that in this game specifically, you're never usually sitting at five security very often, and you kind of want to keep at the three or so range because that way your uh, carriers are going to be active which we're going to get to as we get later on in the deck profile so we're going to go into the rookies the first rookie we have is the main patamon this is your set one patamon so this is the one where when it's played you reveal the top four and for every yellow tamer that you find you get to add them to your hand this deck is very heavy on tamers and it's very uh, T yellow tamer is kind of the central win condition of the deck so i felt that uh, originally i actually wasn't playing this patamon but i felt that it left a lot to be desired because i didn't just want to hard draw my tamers and play them or i didn't want to have to rely on them coming out of the security and what this does as well is that it lets you combo with the rise graymon which we're going to see later on in the deck profile as well so this is a very cool starter so i actively try to hard play it as opposed to digivolve it uh, i'll digivolve it if it's absolutely necessary but nine times out of ten if i can hard play it i will because it gets your engine going it digs through your deck a lot faster and it gets to add uh potentially uh, more than one card to your hand and uh, all of those tamers all add value to your deck as a whole and they uh contribute to your final end strategy which we'll get to so to round out this patamon we also have starter deck yellow patamon coming in at four so this patamon is really good because of its inheritable ability and what it is is that every time uh once per turn again per digimon because sometimes you'll have multiple ones that uh have evolved from this one specifically if a digimon is destroyed due to its dp being reduced to zero you get plus one memory and this deck is all about dealing with your opponent's threats by reducing their dp to zero it's the only deck in the format that kind of takes advantage of that mechanic to uh disrupt your opponent so what this patamon does specifically and why you want to play it at max copies is that whatever is evolved on top of it whenever you go through your general shine graymon combos or through your general combos that would deal with that dp reduction it's going to give you plus one memory which will allow you to continue playing your turn uh you'll notice that a lot of the cards that we're going to get into later on in the deck are not necessarily high costed but high cost enough that when the general choke memory game goes back and forth you might be forced to end your turn by playing one of these cards and with these patamon you'll gain that memory back which potentially might put you either back at zero or stay on the your side of the memory gauge to help you keep playing so this patamon super important and then to round off our rookies just two copies of uh savers agumon not really much to say here. Uh, his inheritable is if you have three or more tamers, you get to draw one when you attack. I want to squeeze more copies of Agumon in, but I find that the space in this deck is so tight, and uh, you're going to see that with more card choices that I'm going to be explaining or going to be revealing. Again, uh, 
this deck isn't perfect. Uh, this is just kind of built as a baseline based on what I found and what has been spoiled and what I've tested and yada yada yada. So it might come back to a point where if I do rebuild this deck or I do tinker with it, you might see different ratios of everything altogether. But I am interested to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. Do you feel like these ratios are correct? Is there anything you would change? Is there anything you feel that I'm completely wrong with? I want to know. So that is it for the rookies. For the champions, we start off with three of the set three security and kilomon. Um, this is just here because since your core strategy is getting up into a boss uh, mega level Digimon, having a champion pop out of your security for free kind of skips the middleman and lets you only have to play uh, two cards on top as opposed to the full three. So it actually kind of skips a turn in the sense because you're usually playing kind of one card on top a turn until you can get to that final shine Greymon. What the Ankylomon does is that depending on how much memory your opponent's left with you, and if you have other Digimon that have evolved on top of Patamon earlier in the turn, have giving yourself an extra champion to kind of build on top of, make sure that you kind of keep that memory uh, available to you. I, I don't really know if what I'm saying actually makes sense right now. The point is, turboing out a champion is critical in the sense that it gives you a free middle level to build upon to get to your Shine Greymon. Again, I'm not 100% sold on the Okilamons yet, but from what they've done in testing so far, I have uh, objectively seen that they have uh, a lot of good potential. So next we're going to go on to the next champion, which is going to be a 3, Repimon. So Repamon is uh, just a generic vanilla yellow champion, uh, one of the cheapest hard costs to play as well at a three, and with the two evolution costs, it's 4,000. Uh, this deck does not play Geo Greymon, actually, uh, just because we felt that in testing it didn't really, it's inheritable didn't really do a lot for the deck. We just wanted to have more high impact champions, which is why we put in the Aquilamon instead. Um, yeah. So just because they do other things, especially if they're in your security, for example. So that's it for that. Uh, finally rounding off the yellow champions, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So we've got four Unimon, just yellow blocker. Keep yourself alive, part of the game. And to round off our champions, we have two copies of Wizardmon. Wizardmon is a really cool tech I found when I was building this deck. Uh, two things that it does. Uh, if you control a yellow Digimon, which the entire deck is yellow, so there's no reason why you wouldn't, uh, you get Vengeance. And when it's destroyed, you get to draw a card. So, first thing aside, the lore with Wizardmon is adorably sad, because you have to control another yellow Digimon with... I think the designers intended you to play this with Gatomon, because when Gatomon has a purple Digimon die, it gains a buff. So, very, very sad, but I can appreciate it. I love how the game is kind of uh, keeping in tradition with how the uh, the original canon kind of played out. So anyway, back to Wizardmon. Two big reasons why I want to play Wizardmon. Uh, it's a four drop uh, for you. You have to hard summon it because you don't have any purple Digimon to evolve off of it. But it serves two purposes. It puts your opponent in a position where they might not necessarily want to attack with a bigger body, because if you get to keep Wizardmon on your side of the field and you can swing into their big body on your next turn, you can take it out for literally no cost. Uh, because uh, Wizardmon has uh, Vengeance. Vengeance is like Death Touch and Magic Gathering. Whatever uh, destroys it is also destroyed, so whatever Wizardmon crashes into, he's taken that Digimon down with him. So yeah, it kind of puts your opponent in an awkward position where they might not necessarily want to swing with a big body, uh, unless they're, they're going for game or they have some sort of uh, critical damage on board. So Wizardmon is kind of an insurance policy. Uh, Wizardmon is also an opposite insurance policy in the sense that if you swing with it into your opponent's security, if they have a way, not necessarily if they have a way, if the Digimon is literally stronger than Wizardmon and Wizardmon dies due to the security check, you get to draw one due to his when destroyed effect. So that's really cool because you're always maintaining a tempo and advantage with Wizardmon. You're not necessarily losing a card when you, when you decide to swing in with security. So Wizardmon is an insurance policy on both sides of the spectrum, whether used offensively or defensively and it's just a, a solid all-around card in, in this sort of strategy altogether. Next we're going to move on to the ultimates. So 
We've got two Magna Anjuman. Oh, that's on TK side. Good. And we've got two Anjuman on Kari side. So these serve two individual purposes. The Magna Anjuman, you generally want to hard play. I find that the Magna Anjuman is really good late game because late game is when the big options kind of come down in the opponent's hand to kind of prevent you from advancing your board state. So you're going to see Terra Forces, you're going to see Ice Wolf Claw, and you're going to put yourself into that weird like 5-6 memory range that you normally don't see in the beginning stages of the game. And that's when you can just drop down Magna Anjuman, give your opponent one or two memory to start the turn, and then you get to recover one. Worst case scenario, if you need to evolve into Magna Anjuman, you can for the, the standard three cost, but Magna Anjuman's really, really, really good late game at kind of re-establishing your uh, security uh, sources and um, giving you a free ultimate to step on into Shine Greymon as well. Anjou Woman, on the other hand, this is the new Anjou Woman from set three. This is one of the ultimates that you actually want to evolve into due to its when digivolve effect. And what this Anjou Woman does is that when it's digivolved, you get to target a Digimon your opponent controls and it gets security attack minus two until the end of their next turn. So this is kind of a good card because it really helps slow the game down. And it really helps put you in a position where you kind of control the pace and control the tempo. So if you're, like I said earlier, this deck kind of thrives in having three or less security most of the time, because that's when most of your effects trigger or you get most value out of your effects. So with Anjo Woman, you can play in that three security range safely because you're controlling how the attacks of your opponent's Digimon are going to resolve. So finally, for the last ultimate, we play three, or sorry, four, Rise Greymon. I was looking at his evolution cost. So yeah, so it's a three cost. Uh, Rise Greymon is really cool. It has really good synergy with this deck due to your Tamer heavy focus. When it's digivolved, you get to play a yellow Tamer from your hand for free. Unfortunately, you don't get its one plate effects, but not other than the one specific TK, that doesn't really matter. Also, it has a really cool... Uh, inheritable, which if you have three or more yellow tamers, you give the mega that it evolves into its security attack plus one. So that leads us into the final piece of the puzzle. So the main boy, the main mega that this deck is based around is Shine Greymon. Now, unfortunately, I did want to have my orange Digivice IC in the background to represent Diamond and Shine Greymon, but unfortunately, I just can't find it. So we settled on the holy Digimon's children instead. But let's talk about Shine Greymon because he's the one on the picture right now. He is a four cost evolution into a mega and his effect is writ as follows. When he is Digivolved, you can rest every single yellow tamer that you currently have on the board. And for each yellow tamer that you rested, you get an instance of minus an opponent's Digimon's DP by 4,000. So again, that's an instance of. That means that if you have three tamers that you tap, you get to activate the effect of minus 4,000 three individual times. You can also pick and choose whatever targets you want. So if you want one Digimon that's 6,000 and one Digimon at 3,000, you can put two of them on the six and one of them on the three, and you can wipe them both out. The longer the game goes on and the more you get to have more tamers in play, the deadlier this gets. We actually had just had a game last night where I was actually able to get all nine tamers from this deck into play. And when I slide, shine, slammed Shine Greymon down, it was doing 30, 36,000 damage across a spread of my entire opponent's entire field. I'm actually going to kind of edit a picture of that end board into this video as well. So it's a really good way at clearing out your opponent's board uh, in one of two ways. You can either focus all of your 4,000 reductions per tamer onto one single Digimon if they have a giant body that you just need to clear out, or if your opponent decides to go wider as opposed to going taller and they have a bunch of smaller Digimon on the board, you can just pick and choose which ones you want to clean out and that just paves the way for your victory. The other cool thing about Shine Greymon is that he gains 1,000 for every yellow tamer you control. So again, by default, let's say on average you're going to be having three per game. That means that he's already coming into the board with 14,000. Now, you're going to say, but, you know, the, the biggest number to beat right now is like 15,000 because that's the Omnimon standard. Even so, you can get Shine Greymon above Omnimon depending on how many more tamers you can push into play. So that kind of gives you that ability to swing into your opponent's Digimon uh, with a lot of confidence, knowing that you're going to be able to clear them. Uh, you can also swing with confidence into your security, knowing that there's not much hiding in there that's going to be able to deal with them. So Shine Greymon is just a beast, 
uh, and uh, I'm really excited to build this deck uh, in real life when we actually get the, the, the physical cards. Not only that, as you can see, TK is one of my favorite characters, so anytime I get a chance to play with Angel Digimon, I'm going to be on board. So, there are three more Megas in this deck. Uh, Shine Greymon is your main uh, attacker of sorts, so the other Megas that we play are kind of fallback options, uh, depending on how the, the way the course of the game is going to go through. So, we have two, Seraphimon. So, Seraphimon, when he's Digivolved, you get to recover one uh, security. Just guaranteed, just recover it. Boom. And uh, on your turn, if your security is three or more, you get that security attack plus one. So this kind of, uh, again, it both conflicts and not conflicts with the statement I made about how you want to sit at that three security threshold. Uh, Seraphimon, you always want to be at least three, so that way you can get that extra security attack plus one. And because if you did evolve him on top of the Rise Greymon, you're actually going to have security attack plus two. Uh, also to mention, Shine Greymon's normally going to be on top of Rise Greymon as well, so you're going to be attacking with that, you know, 14, 15, 16,000 of security attack plus one. And then the last Mega we play is just one Slash Anjumon. Uh, this is kind of one of those tech options that... Uh, it's kind of a fifth Shine Greymon in a sense, because when you Digivolve it, you're going to take 1,000 away from your opponent's Digimon. So it's just an extra copy uh, of a card that would help you kind of lower your opponent's stats enough to the point where you could kill something or deal with a threat. Obviously, it's not as good as Shine Greymon by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just another option. Also, uh, just goes to mention, back when we discussed the earlier Patamon, where every time a... Uh, Digimon's DP is reduced to zero, you get plus one memory. That's five copies of a card that will actively be reducing uh, your opponent's Digimon's DP to zero to an attempt to destroy them. So with that in mind, and continuing the minus DP trend, we're going to go over the four options in the deck, which is two Glorious Bursts and two Jaden, Eden's Javelin, rather. Originally, when I first built the deck, it was actually four Glorious Bursts due to the fact that um, I wanted to hard draw Glorious Burst as much as possible, and I did want to search it off of the one uh, set one TK, but I found that, I don't know, it was just, it was weird. I found that if I had more Glorious Bursts in my security and I didn't get a chance to see them often, uh, it was just kind of a waste of a security check. And I just wanted to have more high impact cards in my security that I can still do things. And with Eden's Javelin, um, I can play it both from my hand as a cantrip because it gives me a draw one, or I could trigger it off my security. And the way this deck plays, you're generally going to have a lot of cards in your hand. So Eden's Javelin, I should explain what they both do first before I, I discuss the theory behind them. So Glorious Burst, uh, it's a nine cost natively, but it reduces by one for every tamer that you control. And, and this is the other issue I had with Glorious Burst before I discuss its effect. I find a lot of the time if I maxed it out at four, when I had multiples in my hand, it was at a point where I didn't have a lot of tamers in play, so I couldn't quite capitalize on its reduction ability. So uh, I didn't feel confident playing it because I didn't want to give my opponent tons of memory. Now, what the effect is is actually really worthwhile because it minuses 12,000 for an opponent's Digimon. So nine times out of ten, you're using that to wipe out an opponent's threat or one of their Megas potentially and just clearing it off the board. Comparatively, if you jump over to Eden's Javelin, it's going to be six cost, which is already three less than Glorious Burst without needing the Tamer on the field. Uh, it lets you draw one, like I said, it's but it also lets you minus 1,000 for every card in your hand. And this deck sometimes will have a lot of cards in hand because you're burning through a lot of evolutions, and a lot of times uh, there's a lot of kind of draw pass in this deck as you're just trying to controlling the board and staying alive. So you're generally going to have about maybe five, six, seven cards in hand to resolve this effect, which means although you can't hit the same levels that Glorious Burst would use to go after, you can still potentially go after, you know, rookies and champions that your opponent's trying to build up to just kind of get rid of them and, and clear the way. So Eden's Javelin had more value when it's flipped as a security, but it also had um, not as much of a negative impact if I had to hard drive versus Glorious Burst earlier in the game. These ratios, again, they're being fooled around with all the time, and this might change again, but this is just what we found was the most consistent so far. So to round off the deck, there's nine cards left, and what they are is they're just going to be nine copies of the yellow tamers that are currently in circulation. So we've got Starter Deck TK. Starter Deck TK is a two cost. Uh, generally, if I can play him turn one, I like to, because 
uh, my turn one plays will usually be like drop a rookie draw and then play TK to give my opponent two memory. And what TK allows me to do is that all my security Digimon are going to have plus 2000 DP. Next we've got starter deck TK. Starter deck TK is probably one of the best tamers in my opinion in this deck. Uh, you play it, it's the memory increaser, so uh, automatically your memory is going to go to three, and you get to search through your security, add one of the yellow cards that you find into your hand, and then you recover one. Now, the reason why I keep uh, stressing this hovering around three security statement is because of Kari. Uh, Kari makes it so that you kind of break the game in terms of your starting memory every turn. Um, if you can get at least one Kari in play in combination with your starter deck TK, you're starting every turn with four memory, guaranteed, without fail. You increase the number of Kari's on the field, that increases the starting number of memory you get per turn. Again, you get two Kari's, you start the turn with five memory. You get all three Kari's in play with one starter deck TK, you're starting the turn with six memory. That means it puts your opponent into really awkward situations because nine times out of ten they're playing their cards in a way that they're specifically uh, organizing their plays in a way that they're going to end you on one to three memory so that way you don't get the full value out of your tk for example so when i say that uh sometimes if your opponent's at two for example and they need to play something before the end of their turn Sometimes it's beneficial for them to play a five cost because they know that you're going to get three guaranteed because of TK. But if they play a four cost instead, it's not so bad because you're just going to get the extra one to get full value. Now you add Kari into the mix. Let's say I have one Kari. Now I'm getting four memory guaranteed. Well, now if I play this five cost, I feel like I'm wasting it because you're still going to get an extra memory at the end of the day. And then if I have two Kari's on the field, I'm in a situation where I need to start playing higher cost cards to get full value out of the fact that you're going to reap so much free memory. So it's almost like your opponent's put in a position where they play cards suboptimally just so that you don't get free resources. And if they do continue to play the game normally and don't fall into that trap of playing suboptimally, you still get free memory, so it's a win-win. So I feel that uh, playing the game, controlling the game from a three security perspective, uh, especially when you uh, start getting to Kari's, is super, super, super strong, and it really helps ramp up your deck in a way that you can keep your engine going consistently, turn by turn. So that is the Shine Greymon deck. 1.0 that we're currently testing and this is what you saw in the learn with me series against the imperial german blue deck uh, that deck has been posted as well if you guys want to take a look at that so yeah what did you think am i close for one of my first deck builds am i out in left field do i have no idea what the heck i'm talking about uh, did i give you anything to think about that's actually kind of cool insight let me know uh make a comment below uh let us know your thoughts uh like and subscribe and everything and all that jazz that everyone has to say at the end of all of their youtube videos because that's what we're conditioned to do now and yeah we're going to keep making more digimon content uh stay tuned there is going to be a ragnamon black versus ragnamon red sorry ragna lordmon red versus ragna lordmon black uh match that we're going to be posting soon as well as those accompanying deck lists so this is just kind of the things that we're starting out with and these are the things that we're kind of picking up and playing for the time being uh if you have any deck suggestions that you would like us to build or you would like us to try let us know we'll put them together we'll make a video for you guys you guys are the most important people to us and we want to make you guys happy so yeah uh, this game's awesome. I'm having a blast. I love Digimon, as you can tell, and uh, I can't wait to keep going at it. So this is Mike from Overground. Have a great one, guys. Take care. Bye.